वेलकम टू थर्ड पार्ट ऑफ प्रैक्टिस प्रॉब्लम्स ऑन कॉम्बिनेशनल सर्किट्स द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन दैट यू कैन सी हियर इज एक्चुअली वन ऑफ द टॉपिक्स फ्रॉम द कॉम्बिनेशनल सर्किट्स एंड आई डोंट रिमेंबर इफ आई हैव एक्सप्लेन दिस टू यू और नॉट व्हेन वी वर स्टडिंग द एरर्स एंड सब्ट्रैक्टर्स दैट्स व्हाई आई हैव टेकन दिस थिंग हियर एंड वी विल सी हाउ इट वर्क्स इट्स अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सर्किट एंड देयर इज अ प्रोबेबिलिटी दैट दिस क्वेश्चन विल बी आस्क्ड टू यू एनीवेयर इन योर कॉम्पिटिटिव एग्जाम्स और इन योर कॉलेज एग्जाम्स सो लेट्स सी why it is very important it can act as a four bit adder as well as a four bit subtractor so this is the advantage of this circuit the single circuit is here and it can act as adder at a time and it can act as subtractor at a time and how we are going to make it adder and subtractor that we have to see now and uh, before actually going into that let me tell you that this one here is my c in and it is the thing which decides the performance of the circuit that how it is going to perform is it going to do the addition or the subtraction so let's start our analysis with this xor gates that you can see here i am having four xor gates for the four bits here and one of the input to this xor gate is always one you can see this one is going in this xor gate here and here so what will happen to the output of this xor gate that we have to see now and uh, you already know i can write xor operation as a complement b or b complement a now let's say one of the input is 1 always high so b is always high now my equation here will be a complement 1 complement 1 and a complement now the complement of 1 is 0 and if i take and operation with 0 i am having 0 and the complement of a is a complement and ending it with 1 gives me a complement so finally i am having a complement so you can say that it is acting as a not gate whenever you are having one of the input to the xor gate as 1 it acts as the not gate that's why we call it as a controlled inverter it is a different thing you already know these things so at this point i'm having x3 complement here i'm having x2 complement at this point x1 complement and at this point i'm having x0 complement so this is what we are getting as the output of the four xor gates now this is a four bit parallel adder so definitely it is going to add the corresponding bits it is going to add x0 complement with y0 x1 complement with y1 and the same operation will be done with the last two bit what actually is happening here the y0 is added with the x0 complement now what you mean by this thing it is a very important thing for me to explain right now this is actually the subtraction why i am calling it as a subtraction because if you remember from the complement presentation i explained you if i take the two's complement this is two's complement and add it with any number it is equivalent as subtracting the same number okay it means that if i take the two's complement of x0 that is my x0 dash and if i add it with y0 it is equivalent as subtracting x0 from y0 this is very important thing i will write this thing down for you adding two's complement is equivalent as the subtraction this is something you have to remember always when you are in digital electronics so what actually this circuit is doing it is now subtracting we are getting y0 minus x0 similarly y1 minus x1 and y2 minus x2 y3 minus x3 and whatever be the results here is the output z so i can say that this circuit is working as the subtractor and option b is correct y minus x now if i want this circuit to work as the adder what i have to do i have to just make this one the value of c in equal to 0 so all these ones will become 0 okay and uh, when there is a xor operation and one of the input is 0 you will find that the output is the variable what i mean is that if i am having a xor 0 so i am going to have a only 
it's a very simple thing that you can do so I'm simply having x0 added with y0 x1 added with y1 x2 added with y2 x3 added with y3 so it's acting as a adder when cn is 0 it is acting as a subtractor when cn is 1 now there is one thing that you have to think is that I am taking the 2's complement okay and just complementing x0 is not going to give me 2's complement it is 1's complement so to make 2's complement I need to add 1 it's very clear if you need 2's complement just take 1's complement and then add 1 to it you can see that I have given this c in here and this c in goes inside and added with the 1's complement so in this way we are getting our 2's complement so I hope this thing is clear to you. If you have any doubt regarding this circuit, you can ask in the comment box because it is a very important thing. From this presentation onwards, there will be a homework problem for you every time. There will be a problem selected by me on the last of the presentation that you have to solve by yourself and post the answer or the option. A, B, C, D is the option. You can post the answer as well as the option. If you want to explain something about that, you can also do that. So it's a good thing for you to practice. So watch the presentation till the end so that you can have your homework problem. Now let's move to question number two. And in this case, we are having a problem on the multiplexer. This problem I have taken to make you feel that you can solve any problem regardless of its look. By look, I mean that if you look this problem in the first side, you will find it a little bit tough. You will think that what you have to do actually in this because something opposite is going in this. But I just want to show you that it's not the way to approach a particular problem. You cannot say a problem is tough or it is easy until and unless you start solving it. Sometime a small problem will prove to be a tough one, whereas sometime a tough looking problem will prove to be a very simple one. So don't judge the problem by its look, just go and start solving it. I have explained you the digital electronics from the basic to the everything so that you can solve each and every problem that you will face. So let's move to our question number two and first we will read what it says. Consider the circuit shown below, this circuit, the output of 2 is to 1 marks, it is definitely a 2 is to 1 marks, is given by the function g is equal to ac or bc complement. Now let's see what I'm having here. The c, c here is my selector variable, I can see. So c is my selector variable and depending upon the value of c, the input will be linked to the output. So if C is 0, A is linked to G. So I'm having G equal to A. And if C is equal to 1, this E is linked to G. So G is equal to E. So I can write G as C complement A or E C. And here E is equal to B. So I can write E as B here. Now you can see that that A is there when C is equal to 1 and B is there when C is equal to 0. But in this case, we have done the opposite because this is what the common tendency of people while solving the marks. They always consider this thing first. Okay, but it is not like that. You cannot see what is inside the circuit. They are just giving the outputs. The circuit may be reversed. You cannot see that. So you have to check these things before approaching to the problem. So in this case, I have to cut this thing down and G is equal to B. It means when C is 0, B is linking to G and when C is 1, A is linking to G, which is definitely a opposite thing or a different thing that we have done till now. But there is no problem doing that. There is no question about these things. So G is equal to A in this case. Now I can write it as C complement B or A C. The same thing will be happen to this marks because these two are identical one. And what we have to do is to find the value of function F. So F is equal to, this is our selector variable for this multiplexer. This is also a 2 is to 1 marks. And when y is 0, it means y complement, this b is linked to f. Okay, and b is what? b is x. Okay, you can see from here. So x is there. Or the g is very simply our c complement b or a c. And uh, you can see that a is what? a is 0. This is 0. So I can neglect this thing. And b is e. So ultimately I'm having C complement E as the input to this marks. 
Now when y is equal to 1, this a is linked to the output and I'm having c complement e. So let's see what I'm having in my options and this c is definitely equal to x. So I can write it as x. So y complement x, e x complement y. So option b is correct you can see so this is the way to approach the problem you have to break the norms that you have developed in your mind that every time whenever the selected variable is zero you have to link this input it's not always true because you're not looking inside this circuit in the inside this block you can say so this is the second problem now there is a homework problem for you this is the homework problem and uh, you have to find out the value of x in this case. So solve this problem right away. You have done enough of the multiplexers and it will be a good practice to you. And post the answer in the comment box. You can post the option number A, B, C, D. Okay. So best of luck for this and see you in the next presentation.